Oh, interesting question though, right? How pendulum clocks came into being? We all have seen these clocks. We call them grandfather clocks, right? A pendulum going from tick, 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 right? So that's why we have seen these clocks, but have you ever wondered how pendulum clocks came into being? So this is our way of thinking about motion and time and answering the question of pendulum clocks. So let's see. Whenever we talk about these kind of clocks, we always think there are clock towers we have seen like this, right? If I ask you, don't even think, just give me an answer of the famous clock tower. What will you say? I'm pretty sure you'll say, Sir Big Ben of London, right? That's true. Big Ben, very famous clock tower. Gone through two blitz, world wars. It has seen enough. It's a very famous thing. But before the pendulum clocks, you know what? It was, it was not like people do not have clocks. They had clocks, it just did not use pendulums. Then what was it? It was the mechanical clocks. These clocks used levers, gears, and, and all the mechanical things. But the problem was they were not very controllable. And that's why slowly, slowly pendulum clocks came into being and started overpowering them, right? Okay. But still, we haven't answered the question, how they came into being. Someone must have thought something, no? You know who was it? It was Galileo Galilei. One day, around 1580s something, he was in a party. He was looking at a chandelier. The chandelier was swinging. So he started wondering. He felt something. Maybe there is something about the swinging chandelier, about swinging objects, that you know what, maybe they can be used for timekeeping. So he started doing more, uh, more research and he found some properties of swinging objects which helped him to at least establish this fact. Yes, swinging pendulums can be used for timekeeping also. What properties were there, right? This was a swinging chandelier which made him wonder, right? So he understood some properties. What properties? Let's understand some useful terms. First, when a pendulum, what is a pendulum? A length, a bob, and moving to and fro, right? This is what a pendulum is, simple. The, what is the most, first most important uh, term for this, I would say? It's the oscillation. What is one oscillation? Let's think, come on, what is oscillation? Oscillation is to and fro motion, all right. Now, what is one oscillation? When an object moves, or when a pendulum, I would say, the bob of pendulum goes from here to here, again to the same position, right? When it, when it reaches to the same position again, this is what we call as one oscillation. All right, so this is one full swing and we also call it as one oscillation. All right, so what is the time period? Because we anyways are saying that pendulums and timekeeping is somehow relevant, right? So something must be there with time, right? So it's a time period. One full swing equals one oscillation and the time taken for the pendulum to complete this one oscillation is what we call as the one time period or I would say the time period of the pendulum, right? Time taken to complete one oscillation is the time period. Nice. Now, on what thing does time period of a pendulum depends? Because we are somehow going towards time measurement and that's something we need to be very careful with, right? So let's see on which factors this time period depends upon. First thing, it depends on length. How much length the pendulum has. It depends on that, right? If shorter it is, time period is less. If it is long, time period is more. And in a session, in our session, we have done this. We have done this experiment, right? You remember, don't worry. I'll give you the link in the description. So, different swing width, does it depend on different swing width? It should. If I take a pendulum, release it from here or release it from here, it should be different, but you know what? It is not. We have seen this also. Different swing width, the time period does remain same. It does not change. All right. The same time is taken. Let's see. Different weights. If I use a heavier bob or a lighter bob, would it matter? It won't. We have seen this also. Right. It doesn't matter if you use what is the weight of the bob you are using. The time period will still remain the same. All right. Good, good. So it only depends on length. Yes. Gravity also, but if you are on Earth, I wouldn't worry about that. Yes, I would say, fine, just think about length. All right, nice. Now, you know what? Although Galileo Galilei started wondering or started exploring this timekeeping method of using pendulums, it was Christian Huygens who uh, came up with the concept of pendulum clocks for the first time. So, it was Christian 
Hygiens. We all remember him for one more thing. The Hygiens principle in wave optics, right? It's okay, right? Nice. So, how does a pendulum... Now, this is one question which we all wonder sometimes. Even if I release a pendulum, no? It goes, it will stop after some time because there is atmosphere, right? So, does it mean uh, in, the, in the grandfather clock, is it vacuum? I won't say. The pendulum is making the gears to move. And those gears are making the pendulum to move, right? It's a, it's a kind of a supported motion to each other. So this is how we understood that a pendulum clock, the time period is two seconds, half oscillation is one second. And you know what? You'll realize this. Whenever you see a grandfather clock, you will see a, a slight tick kind of sound, right? Tick, tick, tick. This one tick is one second, right? And why is this tick? Because it gets locked and the gears are turning because of this. So gears are supporting the pendulum. They don't let it stop overcoming the friction, give a slight push to it, and pendulum is moving the gears. So it's kind of a supported motion to each other, right? It's a very good thing. So that's how these clocks used to work. And that's why the pendulum doesn't stop, all right? Now, do we use them today? They are kind of obsolete nowadays, no? What do we have? Today's devices use a particular crystal to keep time. Which crystal? You want a hint? You know what? The name of this crystal, I would say. Till now, you might not know about this. It's there on a lot of watches. Go ahead, think about it, and let me know what the answer is in the comment section. All right? So, come on, guys. If you feel this video was good, like it. If you think it will help someone else, share it. And you know what? I hope you are already subscribed. If you are not, subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon because we'll keep coming back with more interesting sessions for you. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.